Hey, what's up everyone? I want to welcome you back to beginning interactive fiction with Twine and Sugarcube video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we're going to be diving into objects. So far in this series, we've been dipping our toe into the code waters, and hopefully you've been feeling comfortable with that. Well, in this episode, we're going to be talking about objects, and we're going to be taking all those things that you learned and putting them together in one place. Objects may seem a little daunting at first, but they provide an excellent way for us to pass data around. Basically, an object is simply a grouping of associated data, meaning you take data about a specific thing. Let's say an inventory item, like a gun. This gun will have a name. It's going to have a description. It may have a weight. It may have a damage. Before you knew objects, what you would do is create individual variables about this this object about this weapon but with an object you can take all these all these different variables that aren't related to each other and group them into one object and then you can pass that object around or access that object so that you can get that data in one place objects are incredibly useful and once you start using them you'll be wondering how you lived without them Okay, let's see these objects in action. I'm gonna open up the brig here. In the brig, let's just create a simple object to say, contain the information about a wrench. For instance, we're carrying a wrench with us. So the way I do this is I start off with my set macro like so, and now I'm going to give my, my object a name. I'm just gonna call this item for now, and then I'm gonna put an equal sign. The way I declare an object is I use an open curly brace and a closing curly brace. Then when I'm done configuring my object, I'll end my macro like so. So this is the beginning of an object. It's empty right now. The curly braces here show that we have an object, but the object contains nothing. So we want to associate fields inside of this object. And these fields can be whatever you want them, that you can name them what, whatever, your, whatever your heart desires. Just be consistent so you don't confuse yourself later on. The first name I'm going to give is the name of the item, and this is going to be name, like so. And then, once you provided the, the name of the field, you're going to put a colon like this. Now you're gonna provide the value of that. In this value, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna write wrench, like so. And now I'm gonna put a comma here. This indicates I'm adding more fields. I'm gonna add another field. Let's just call this weight. In this case, I'm going to provide a number, and the number is just going to be one, one. So it's one pound, or you know, you can put whatever number you want, or so on. And then I'm going to provide a description. From there, I can just simply put any bit of text. And now I've created my object, and my object now has three properties, which I can now reference. Okay, so how do I use my object? It's as simple as referencing the variable name, so in this case I'm putting item, and then I'll hit a period. When I, press, when I add the period, I can then just determine what field I want to add. In this case, I want to print out the item's name. And you can see I just put name like so. If I wanted to print out the weight, I would print out dollar sign item, weight. And if I wanted to print out the description, I can provide the description like this. Let's see this in action. Here you can see we have a wrench. Here it's got one weight, and it's a lifesaver in the deep. So that's pretty awesome. And what it can be really useful, say, when working with inventory. So let's create a bunch of items. So here we have three items, a wrench, a key card, and a shoe. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to delete this stuff here. And I'm going to add these objects to my inventory. So if I move down here and I can now push my wrench and key card and shoe into this array. 
Now, if you're if you're confused about arrays or don't know what they are, check out a previous video where I cover them. So here we've added these objects to the array. And now what we can do is if we go to our inventory, we can now print these items out. So here we have this array. So here we have this loop and we're setting the initializer to zero. It's looping through the length of the array and then it's increasing the, the incrementer here. Now we want to get out the current inventory item. And the way I can do this is I can do use another set and I can set the item to, and we're gonna do inventory I. Like so. And now, and actually this is gonna create weird spacing issues. So for the sake of that, I'm just gonna put that right there. And now I can print out my item's name. There we go. And now when I play this, we're going to go to the inventory, check the inventory. You are holding a wrench, a lifesaver in the deep, a key card gives you access to places, a, slip, a slipper keeps your foot warm. So as you can see, they're really useful for getting all the, that related data and storing it in one place. One last thing about objects is that you can have objects contain other objects. For instance, imagine if this wrench, let's just say this was a backpack like so. What I could do is I could even create another field and I could call it contents. And this contents field can contain, say, an array of items, like so. And then I could copy these other items and put it inside of here. So I can put contents, key card, and a shoe, like this. Now this is an object containing an array, so as you can see there, but I could also add these objects inside of that array if I wanted to, like so. And it uses the same exact way of accessing as you've done before, only this time I would do something like this if I wanted to print out the contents of the backpack. Here, we'll delete this. I could do something like this. Now, if we play this, oops, got a little error there. Let's fix this up. Here we go. We have this object, so let's come back here. And then we can just put name like that. We'll close those out, and we'll play this. There we go, key card. So as you can see, it becomes a little bit verbose code-wise here when we're calling the backpack, we're calling contents, we're calling the first item in the array, and then we're calling the name property again. And like I mentioned, you can also have other objects in here as well. So instead of using the bracket, which we indicated the array, I simply used the curly braces, and then I could put the other objects' names in here. So here I just created an object that has the property of example is the field name and the, the value is test. And the way you would do this would be backpack.contents.example and that will print out the value. The best way to really start working with objects is to start playing around with them and using them inside of your, inside of your games. Again, you just start small, don't think too elaborately but as you start to grow comfortable with them, you can start building some real useful systems using these objects. 
And as you've already seen, they make for great use cases with for inventories. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you, you learned a little bit about objects. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a question in the comments and I will see you in the next episode. See you then.